Coming to you from an undisclosed underground location, this is Trend Comics presents The Green Hornet Radio. The Green Hornet is a fictional mass crime fighter created in 1936 by George Trendle and Fran Stryker, with input from radio director James Jewell. Though various incarnations of the Hornet exist, most versions has the Green Hornet as the alter ego of Britt Reed, wealthy young publisher of the Daily Sentinel newspaper by day, but by night, clad in long green overcoat, gloves, fedora, mask, Reed fights crimes as the mysterious vigilante known as the Green Hornet. He's accompanied by his loyal and similarly masked partner and confidant, Cato, who drives their advanced car, the Black Beauty. Though both the police and general public believe the Hornet to be a wanted criminal, Reed uses that perception to help him infiltrate the underworld, leaving behind for the police and criminals any incriminating evidence he has found. In the original radio incarnation, Britt Reed is the son of Dan Reed Jr., the nephew of John Reed, the Lone Ranger. This makes the Green Hornet the grand nephew of the Lone Ranger. The relationship is alluded to at least once during the radio show when Dan Reed visits his son to question him on why Britt has never captured the Hornet. Upon learning the truth behind his son's dual identity, Dan Reed recalls his days in Texas with his uncle, the Lone Ranger. The series originated on January 31, 1936 on WXYZ. WXYZ was also the same station that brought you the Lone Ranger. The series ran from November 16, 1939 through September 8, 1950. It briefly returned to the airwaves on September 10 to December 5, 1952. Distinguished by its use of classical music for themes and bridges, The Green Hornet was one of radio's best known adventure shows. The vigilante nature of the hero's operation quickly resulted in The Green Hornet being declared an outlaw himself and Britt Reid played to it. Green Hornet became thought of as the city's biggest criminal, allowing him to walk into suspected racketeering offices and ply them for information, or even demanding a cut of their profits. In doing so, the Green Hornet usually provoked them into attacking him to remove his competition, giving him license to defeat and leave them for the police without raising suspicion. Underground in an undisclosed location. This is Trend Comics present The Green Hornet. The Green Hornet is a 1940 black and white 13 chapter movie serial from Universal Pictures. Produced by Henry McRae and directed by Ford Vida. It stars Gordon Jones, Wade Butler, Key Luke, and Anne Nigel. The series is based on the Green Hornet radio series by George Trendle and Fran Stryker. Brett Reed, publisher of the Sentinel newspaper, is secretly the vigilante criminal crime fighter, The Green Hornet. He and his Korean valet, Kato, investigate and expose several seemingly separate criminal rackets. This leads them into continued conflict with The Chief, the mastermind behind the criminal syndicate controlling those rackets. Originally produced as a 13 chapter movie serial, The Green Hornet consisted of Chapter 1, The Tunnel of Terror, 
Chapter 2, The Thundering Terror. Chapter 3, Flying Coffin. Chapter 4, Pillar of Blade. Chapter 5, The Time Bomb. Chapter 6, Highways of Terror. Chapter 7, Bridge of Disaster. Chapter 8, Dead or Alive. Chapter 9, The Hornet Trap. Chapter 10, Bullet and Ballot. Chapter 11, Disaster Ride Through Rails. Chapter 12, Panic in the Zoo. And Chapter 13, Doom of the Underworld. Undisclosed location, deep underground. This is Tread Comics presents The Green Hornet Strikes Again. The Green Hornet Strikes Again is a 1941 Universal Black and White 15 chapter movie serial based upon the Green Hornet radio series by George Trendel and Fran Stryker. It is the sequel to Universal's earlier serial, The Green Hornet, from 1940. This was the 117th serial, the 49th sound, of the 137 that Universal produced. The plot involves racketeering and is unusual for a movie serial by having mostly standalone chapters instead of each running into the next. This was also the case with Universal's first Green Hornet serial. Wealthy publisher Brett Reed and his trusted Korean valet and sidekick Kato disguise themselves as crime-fighting vigilantes, the Green Hornet and Kato. They battle the growing power of a ruthless crime lord, Boss Brogan, and his bearded racketeers across the city, all of which have strong links to the unfriendly foreign power. The Green Hornet strikes again, stars Warren Hall as Brett Reed and his alter ego, the Green Hornet. Cole replaced Gordon Jones in this role and also provided the voice of the Hornet instead of radio voice Al Hodge in the original series. Wayne Bolter as Michael Axford, Brett Reed's bodyguard. And Nigel as Lenore Casey Case, Brett Reed's secretary. D. Luke as Cato. The Green Hornet sidekick, and Pierce Watkins as Bob Brogan, Racketeer. The Green Hornet Strikes Again, 1941, 15th chapter serial, featured the following chapter. Chapter 1, Flaming Havoc. Chapter 2, The Plunge of Peril. Chapter 3, The Avenging Heaven. Chapter 4, A Night of Terror. Chapter 5, Shattering Doom. Chapter 6, The Fatal Flash. Chapter 7, Death in the Cloud. Chapter 8, Human Target. Chapter 9, The Tragic Crash. Chapter 10, Blazing Fury. Chapter 11, Thieves of the Night. Chapter 12, Crashing Barriers. Chapter 13, the Flaming Inferno. Chapter 14, Racketeering Vulture. And the finale, Chapter 15, 
Snoopers to be taken care of. Lock the door. This is Grant Street. Where's the warehouse? Six blocks down, on the left side of the street. Hey, Dolan. Run this truck in the shed and bring in the red one. We'll load these cases of explosives. Why well, don't you try doing some work yourself sometime? Get going. There'll be another box aboard that red truck. Go on, get over there, Irish. You dirty mug, turn the girl loose or I'll... The girl will be taken care of. Open up. It's the police. The police. Open up. Free. Quick, get out of here. You're not hurt, sir. I'm all right. Quick, this way. Hornet did you a good turn last night out of the Grant Street warehouse. Ah, sure, he was just trying to get on me good side so I'd lay off trying to run him down. Boss, if I got a story. What is it? A new angle on the big fire last night. You mean the one down at the Crawford warehouse? Yeah, I went down to the ruins trying to get a story from Crawford. Any luck? No, he wouldn't talk to me, but he talked to this guy plenty, his watchman. Jasper Vale, sentenced for arson, paroled six months ago. 
You mean he was the watchman at the warehouse that burned? That's right. I recognize him and dug his picture out of the morgue. For old officer Russell Spencer. A case. Get me Russell Spencer down at the parole office, please. Yes, sir. Lowry, I think you've got something here. Crawford has had three fires in the last six months. Just the length of time this fellow Bale's been out of the pen. Mr. Reed calling Russell Spencer. Just a minute. Yes, Case. I have Mr. Spencer for you. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello, Mr. Spencer. This is Britt Reed of the Sentinel. I'm trying to locate a man by the name of Jasper Vale. Oh, he did. Thank you. He just left Spencer's office to go to Crawford's home. He's still working for Crawford. Holy crow, we'll nab him at Crawford's house and bring him here. Oh, wait a minute. You get over there, and when he leaves, trail him. Okay, right. This is Crawford talking. Listen, Crogan, I just had a call from Harrington, the adjuster. He says they're holding up payment of the claim. That claim is airtight, Crawford. If you did what I told you to do, we have nothing to worry about. They must have some reason for holding up the payment. They may have found something. Listen, Crawford, your job is to collect that insurance. See that you do it. What's that? Of course we're going to pull off the job tonight. Crawford will make more money on this deal than he ever made in his life, and he's squawking, eh? He's afraid some of that merchandise may have been discovered. <laughs> How could it be discovered? That stuff's on its way to Europe. Those foreign agents sure work fast. Trouble down there at the parole office? For the sakes. I told Spencer I'm still working with Crawford. Looks like everything's here. Yeah, it's all here, all ready to roll. Gasoline, excelsior, waste. Looks like it's all there. Yep. It's all set. Now, you better get going. The boys have the warehouse almost cleaned out by the time you get there. Hey, how's about a lantern? You know, I always work with a lantern. Wait a minute. I've got one in there. See it down the warehouse. Okay. I'll lock up. Bail in that truck. Where's he going? To some warehouse. But Dolan and that other crook, Daruka, had that truck loaded with something, and I'm betting it's dynamite. Come on, we better follow it. the alibi. We were oh. chasing the truck. It's loaded with dynamite. Yeah? Well, what are you loaded with? Now, look, officer, my name is Axford. Michael Axford. I used to be on the force myself. Well, well, well. That's a funny thing. I used to be in the pickle business. But that doesn't give me the right to run around in a vinegar barrel. Where's right. your license? You believe that Crawford is a party to the conspiracy? Undoubtedly. He fires an honest watchman to hire Vale, a parole convict. Then come a series of fires, covered by insurance on merchandise that have been removed previously from the warehouse. If Axford and Lowry are right, those crooks are going to pull off something big tonight. 
The Green Hornet's going to find out where Vale delivered that truckload of explosives. Then we are writing to... To Crawford's home, 1762 Oakdale. I think that gentleman can be induced to give the Green Hornet some valuable information. pull that thing off tonight. Will you get this through your head, Crawford? Nobody will know you're connected with this deal. When we took over control of the Continental Warehouse, I had everything made out in Bordeen's name. You've got his bill of sale to you, haven't you? Yes, I got it right here. But that isn't the thing. Wait here. All right, Krogan. I'll put this bill of sale in the safe tonight. Then I'll see you. Hold it, Crawford. I'll take that bill of sale. Who are you and what do you want? Green Hornet. Yes, the Green Hornet, Crawford. And you know I don't stand for any foolishness. Hand it over. So, Mr. Bordeen has taken over controlling interest in the Continental Warehouse and secretly given you a bill of sale. What business is that of yours? Plenty. I've got several things to settle with Mr. Bordeen. What are you going to do with that? Keep it. What for? For my information, I'm cutting myself in. Cutting in? On what? On your arson racket. You're parking up the wrong tree. I'm not mixed up in any arson racket. That being the case, you won't mind my calling the police. The police? What for? Because you'll either cut me in or I'll expose your racket. You wouldn't dare call the police. You're just as big a racketeer as any of us. Then you admit you are a racketeer. Don't I don't admit anything. It's up to you. Operator, get me the police. Wait! Don't call the police! I'll cut you in. Now you're talking sense. What warehouse is Vale firing tonight? The one on Locust Street and Edge Hill Road. That's all I wanted to know. <coughs> Send the police quickly. 1762 Oakdale Avenue. of Locus and Edgel. Step on it, Cato. We may be too late now. How soon will Vail be back? As soon as he establishes an alibi. Take the flashlight. You stand by in case I signal. Yes, sir. Well, that's the last of it. Good. Take it away, Jack. You fellas go with the truck. That sure was a big job. Sixteen truckloads of stuff. Yeah. We'll get down to the car and beat it. Yeah, wait a minute. What about Al? He's inside. I'm leaving him here until Vale gets back. I want him to take a last look around and see that everything's all right. I get it.
Warehouse Ablaze, Locust Street, Nedge Hill Road. <laughs> 